Well, folks, we're back. The uh, last two problems crashed. I didn't quite expect that. So this is actually take number two. Uh, sorry about all that. But uh, that's why we're in a second video now. So we're approaching problem 50. Oh, why don't we start with 45? We're approaching problem 45. And 45 is kind of tricky until you see what to do. So this is a problem where you're going to want to simplify both sides um, sort of independently. And the reason you're going to want to do that is that they're both pretty complicated. So when you have two complicated sides, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of simplify both sides and meet in the middle. And that's going to be our plan here. On the right hand side, I have secant x minus tangent x quantity squared. Remember when you have a plus b quantity squared, it becomes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's the same factoring pattern as always. So here we'll write that out. Secant squared x minus 2 secant x tangent x plus tangent squared x. So I end up with uh, three terms, secant squared, this thing with the 2, and a tangent squared. Now, I could keep working with this side, but I just am honestly not really sure how I would turn this into a 1 minus 1 plus sine squared situation. So I'm going to pause on that left side and work on the right side. And on the right side, I notice that I could probably do something with conjugates. So I have the 1 plus sine x on the bottom. We've saw, seen this in previous problems. Uh, I hope you, hopefully you saw those in the previous problems. But what if I multiply by 1 minus sine x? This is, seems like it's going to make things a lot more complicated. Uh, and it is going to make things more complicated on the top. But it's going to make the bottom simplify nicely. So on the top, we have, we're going to have to square it using the perfect square pattern. But on the bottom, we have a plus minus. So I'll be able to use a difference of squares pattern. So let's go ahead and write that out. So in the numerator, it's going to be 1 minus 2 sine x plus sine squared x. And on the bottom, it's going to be 1 minus sine squared x. Then what I immediately notice is that that bottom part is going to equal cosine squared x. That's the identity. I'm going to go ahead and uh, since I know that that's cosine squared x, I also want to split these fractions apart. I'm going to go ahead and do that in a single step. So first step, I'm going to have 1 over cosine squared x minus 2 sine x over cosine squared x plus sine squared x over cosine squared x. And this actually is a lot of progress because now if I look at the left side, I notice that a lot of things are really close to where we want them. So let's just keep simplifying. And I bet now that 2 secant tangent is going to somehow turn into 2 sine x cosine squared. So let's see. What can we do? 1 over cosine squared is indeed secant squared x. Then this middle part I'm going to write in three pieces. I'm going to write it as minus 2 times sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. So I just take the cosine squared and I split it apart into two copies of cosine. Um, this is all valid fraction math. And then plus tangent squared x. And you know, I wouldn't have known to do this if I wasn't also looking at the other side and identifying my goal. So you have to look at both sides and kind of know where you're going. And then I think we're done. This is secant squared x minus 2 tangent x secant x plus tangent squared x. And so I've shown that the left side is equal to the right side and the problem is solved. The problem is complete. I think in this problem it's really nice to work from both sides. At least do that one step on the left side before you uh, go any further. Otherwise you would probably get here and then maybe you'd recognize that that's factorable. Maybe you wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. Um, without knowing what the kind of end goal is. So there the, you see the end goal though. 
Okay, and problem 51 is the last problem today. We did a problem a lot like this in the notes. Um, what we want to recognize here is that uh, the pattern x to the fourth minus y to the fourth is actually also a difference of squares pattern because this is x squared squared minus y squared squared. So this is secretly difference of squares. Well, here we have cosine to the fourth and sine to the fourth. So this is going to factor into cosine squared x minus sine squared x times cosine squared x plus sine squared x. Good so far. Well, wait. That's equal to good old 1. And then I have this term over here. I'm actually need a little more parentheses. Then I have this term here. I notice I have sine squared. Uh, no, I guess I, I switched from t to x. I'm going to stay with x. But I notice I have two sine squared. So I need to get rid of this cosine squared. Cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So I have 1 minus sine squared minus sine squared times 1. Well, that's the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared, which uh, I guess I'm going to switch the variables. There wasn't any logic there. I just forgot to write the correct variable. And that's equal to what we were going for. So this problem is also solved. And that's it for today, folks. Uh, sorry this took so long. I will uh, see you guys next time. Please email me with your questions, uh, responses. I'm happy to grade your papers. If you send me your work, I'm happy to take a look at it and tell you if you're uh, working on the right track or not. This Everything I've done here is not the only way to solve these problems, but it is one way. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I will see you guys next time.